Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Election Predictions official YouTube channel, where I talk all things politics and elections. Coming up, we're going to be taking a quick look at the changes to the 2024 Electoral College map following the 2020 census, and how they uniquely and perhaps dramatically favor one party. The United States has experienced a remarkable streak of nine consecutive presidential elections, starting in 1988, where neither the Democrats nor the Republicans have secured a double-digit victory in the popular vote. This ongoing sequence marks the longest period in the history of the current two-party system, which emerged just before the Civil War. While some elections during this time, such as those in 1988, 1996, and 2008, resulted in clear victories for one side, there have been several more intense and closely contested races. The 2000 election between Al Gore and George W. Bush stands out, of course, with the winning margin in the decisive state of Florida being a mere 537 votes out of nearly 6 million cast. Republicans have managed to win two presidential elections, namely in 2000 and 2016, without securing the popular vote. Similar instances of the winner of the Electoral College not winning the popular vote occurred in the late 1800s, specifically 1876 and 1888, which was the last period characterized by a similar series of closely contested presidential elections. Now, since 2000, the popular vote margin has been less than 5 points in 5 out of the 6 elections, with the exception being Barack Obama's victory in 2008. That is especially remarkable given that out of the 42 presidential elections held since 1856, just 16 of them have been decided by a national margin of less than 5 points. And before we take a quick Electoral College history guide, if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel down below and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. The 2024 presidential election cycle is heating up, and I have all kinds of analysis, election nights, and Electoral College map predictions coming up that you don't want to miss. Now let's continue today's video. The current configuration of the Electoral College, which has pretty much remained in effect since 2000, underwent several changes from the 1996 to 2000 elections, and these changes have endured despite the evolving party coalitions. To gain a visual understanding of these shifts, let's briefly examine some of the Electoral College maps from 1996 to 2020. In 1996, Bill Clinton's second victory resulted in both a popular vote and Electoral College margin, 8.5% and 220, respectively, that have not been topped since. Clinton secured six states in the South or along the border, Arkansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Missouri, Tennessee, and West Virginia, that have not voted for the Democratic Party in any subsequent presidential elections. Conversely, despite his loss, Clinton's Republican opponent, Bob Dole, won Colorado and Virginia, which have now become solid parts of the Democratic coalition. Jumping ahead to the 2000 election, George W. Bush achieved a sweeping victory in the South and narrowly won the Electoral College, infamously. Despite Al Gore's agonizingly close loss in Florida, his performance there was stronger than any other Democrat since. In 2000, Florida's vote closely mirrored the national popular vote, but in subsequent elections, the state has leaned a couple of points more to the right than the national average. Despite Bush's win, though, the Democrats managed to maintain their stronghold in the Great Lakes region, the entire West Coast, and almost all of the Northeast. New Hampshire, however, voted for Bush, marking the last time a Republican would carry a state northeast of New Jersey. Fast forwarding now to 2008, Barack Obama secured a victory similar in magnitude to Clinton's win in 1996. He won the popular vote by 7.3 points and the Electoral College by 192 votes. Obama was unable to regain any of the southernish states mentioned in 1996 that had voted for Clinton. In fact, his performance in some of those states was worse than John Kerry's against Bush four years earlier. He also narrowly lost Missouri, which no longer maintained its previous status as a bellwether state, and has shifted considerably rightward since then. 
However, Obama managed to win several states that did not support Clinton in 1996, including Colorado and Virginia, which have since solidified as Democratic-leaning states, as well as Indiana and North Carolina, which Democrats have actually failed to carry in subsequent elections. In the 2016 election, Donald Trump achieved a notable victory by becoming the only Republican in the 21st century to secure victories in the three crucial Great Lakes states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Additionally, he shifted Iowa and Ohio from swing states to leaning Republican. Nevertheless, a few non-Midwestern states that had previously voted for Bush and Obama remained in the Democratic column, namely Colorado, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, and Virginia. And finally, in the 2020 election, Joe Biden managed to defeat Trump by reclaiming the battleground states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin in the Great Lakes region. He also succeeded in flipping traditionally Republican Sunbelt states, Arizona and Georgia, which had not voted for Obama in either of his elections, and had each only supported Clinton once. Now, with that brief historical summary out of the way, and as we look ahead to 2024, remember that we have gone through another reapportionment cycle following the 2020 census. So, the electoral vote allotments have changed slightly according to population shifts occurring since 2010. California, Illinois, Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia all lost a single electoral vote. Meanwhile, Texas gained two, and Colorado, Florida, Montana, North Carolina, and Oregon added a single vote apiece. Had this allocation been in place in 2020, the Electoral College, as shown here, would have been 303 to 235, for a slightly smaller Biden edge than his 306 to 232 margin three years ago. Now, of course, that may seem relatively insignificant. Why would three electoral votes really matter on a grand scale? Well, there's actually a plausible scenario in which those changes determine the outcome of the 2024 election on their own. Let's take a look again at the certified 2020 Electoral College map. If we give Trump and Republicans the three states that Biden won by the lowest margins— Arizona, which Biden won by 0.3%, Georgia, which Biden won by 0.2%, and Wisconsin, which Biden won by 0.6%, all extremely close margins, the Electoral College outcome would have been a 269 to 269 vote tie. In an election where almost 160 million people voted, we came about 40,000 votes in just these three states from a constitutional crisis scenario in which the U.S. House of Representatives would have decided the presidency. The Twelfth Amendment stimulates that in the event no one wins a majority of the Electoral College votes, in this case 270, the House chooses among the top three finishers in the Electoral College, with each state's delegation getting a single vote. So, for example, all of California's representatives would gather together and vote amongst themselves who the state of California would support. Each state gets one vote in this scenario, and theoretically, each member of the House would vote for their party's candidate. So California would vote blue, and Texas and Florida would vote Republican, and so on. In case you're curious, following the 2022 midterms, Republicans currently control 26 of the 50 House delegations the bare majority. Now, interestingly, this House tie-breaking procedure, unlike the Electoral College, which is endlessly debated and analyzed, is not a prominent feature of election analysis and commentary, probably because it has never been used in anyone's lifetime, and because the odds of it happening are so low. But, as I mentioned, we came incredibly close to this occurring in 2020. However, with all of that being said, the main takeaway from this video is that the 2020 reapportionment cycle could have serious implications on the outcome of the 2024 presidential race. This is because if we transfer this potential map, where Republicans flip Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin, over to the 2024 Electoral College map with new allotments, Republicans would win with 272 electoral votes to Democrats' 266. 
Those three electoral votes Republicans effectively gained following the census would be the difference between a 269 to 269 tie and a Republican win. That's just one scenario. Let's say Democrats hold on to their blue wall and keep Wisconsin, but Republicans flip Nevada and Nebraska's second congressional district, which was redistricted to be more Republican after Biden won it by six points in 2020. We would have a 269 to 269 tie scenario, in what would have been, in 2020, a 272 to 266 Biden victory. Finally, in another plausible scenario, if Republicans flip Michigan, Wisconsin, and Arizona, they would win 271 to 267 using 2024's Electoral College map, but using 2020's map would have again resulted in a 269 to 269 tie. So, ultimately, while perhaps unlikely, the three electoral votes Republicans essentially picked up in the 2020 census could play a decisive role in the outcome of the 2024 election, especially considering how close presidential elections have been in our current political era. That is all for today's video. Let me know what other 2024 related videos you would like to see in the future. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video down below if you did, and subscribe while you're at it. You can check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.